Hello everyone, I'm Zuraida Mamadon, Language Academy, Faculty of Social Sciences, UTM. Welcome to this session. This session is going to be about my narrative of the listening journey from policy formulation to planning. Now my journey began, my listening journey I would say, began when I was appointed the first chair of the English Language Standard and Quality Council at the Ministry of Education in 2012. I was, how should I say, when I was appointed, I was a little bit unsure what my role was, and I was a little bit, um, how should I put it, a bit fearful because I do not know what, what, what was involved uh, holding an esteemed role such as this. Now, the primary responsibility for the LSQC then was to produce a language planning and policy document known as the Roadmap. And this Roadmap aims to, to align or to reform the English language education, namely aligning English language education to international standards. And in this case, the international standard refers to the common European framework of language of framework for languages. Now, um, we managed to finish the roadmap, fortunately, and we submitted the roadmap in December 2015 and was reviewed by a reputable international agency and it was amended for the final submission and it was officially launched by the then Minister of Education on 29th August 2016 and I was so so relieved and so were members of my team. Now what has that got to do with listening? Why am I talking about listening in this context of formulation of uh, policy uh, formulation and policy planning? Well first of all let me talk about the context and background to this, uh, uh, to this listening journey that I went through when I was formulating with my colleagues, of course, uh, the policy and planning the policy. Now, uh, the government of Malaysia has decided to align the English language education system to the CFR. Now, when I was first asked to come up with a planning or with a roadmap, I was, in fact, what I said to them was, what is a roadmap? They listened to me and they laughed. And I listened to them and I asked again, what is the roadmap? And what, what they didn't realize, or I told myself, I don't know what the roadmap was, so I had to do some reading. So that, began, that was the first time when I realized, oh my goodness, and I was, talk, I was actually talking to God and said, oh, how am I supposed to do this? And I realized that, my goodness, Raida, this is something which is really big and you better, you jolly well finish the work. And I said, oh my goodness, what I realized that I have, I had to listen to many people. Now, let me give, give you an ex a little bit of background about this language education planning and policy. Well, the planning itself is to align learning, teaching and assessment from preschool to university to the CFR. That is a policy. And in order to do the alignment, one has to come up with a plan. And this plan is, this plan is a timetable scheduled of different activities to be carried out, out to be carried out in sequence to ensure that the expected outcomes are achieved. So that's very important. How do we, we need to plan in such ways so that all these activities are ordered in a sequence so that at the end of, you know, uh, what you call that the target uh, year, which is 2025, we would achieve all our uh, goals. Now, what does the planning involve? First, we need to determine what we call policy goals to ensure that this roadmap meets uh, societal, institutional and individual needs. 
and to identify activities or involves identifying the activities to achieve the goals. So if you look at what we need to do as member of LSQC, we of course need to listen. You cannot come up with a plan without listening to those who are who actually told us that they want that they want the English education system to be aligned to international standards in the form of CFR. We also have to consider who were affected by this, uh, by this alignment. We need to listen to them as well. And we need to listen to teachers, to parents, and all those involved directly or indirectly, or were rather affected by this alignment. Now let us look at now an area, let us look at how is, uh, my, the next question I sh you should ask me, or rather I should ask myself, in what way is listening important in policy formulation and planning? Yeah. So, yes, because when we talk about listening, people tend to think that's the last uh, thing that we do. But unfortunately, <laughs> or rather fortunately, that's the first thing we do if we don't listen we can't do the work or even if we do the work the work may not be needed by the person whose work is intended for so so in this presentation i would like to relate my own experience my own personal experiences as i began my listening journey in the process of formulating the cfr aligned policy and planning for its implementation. I'm not going to talk about theory of listening because that will be the speci listening specialist. I'm not going to talk about research in listening because that's not my area. But what I'm going to share with you is my own listening journey. It is from the practitioner's point of view, that is from the point of view of the policy maker and the policy planner. Now, when we adopt this, uh, when we, when we talk about it. We, we had a discussion about this reform and we as a group decided that the reform should adopt an inclusive approach an inclusive approach now people say okay it's nice to say an inclusive approach so what do you mean by an inclusive approach so we sat together and discuss and had to listen to my my colleagues as well what they think so we thought that the best way is to engage a stakeholder so the first thing what we mean by inclusive and approach is stakeholder engagement yeah so and by stakeholder engagement we mean we listen to these stakeholders and there were diverse stakeholders with a range of interests and a wide range of roles and these include of course the MEE officials including those actually involved in curriculum listening materials as well as assessment head teachers the teachers themselves, the textbook developers, the teacher training institutes, university, ELT experts, National Union of the Teaching Profession, Parent Action Group for Education page, language associations, language associations, parents and community members. All this, all this then, yeah, during the time when we were formulating the policy and planning for the implementation of this policy they were very important to us and they are still very important now because now it is at the stage of implementation these people are really important to ensure that the policy uh, that we implement is going to work is going to last and is going to make sure it is going to improve the learning outcomes now what do you mean by why do you need to engage stakeholders why do, why do you need to engage stakeholders? And when we engage with them, what should we do? Well, first and foremost, listen to these people. I was telling myself, Zurada, you have to listen. When I was at university, one of the things that, you know, when I was a dean before, one of the things that my colleague used to tell me is that, Prof, you should listen to us. And I realized that when you do policy, you've got to listen to people. Why do you need to listen to people? Why do you need to listen to people? Well, most importantly, we need to listen to people so that we formulate a policy that fulfill the parents' aspirations, the teachers' aspirations, the nation's aspirations. And more importantly, I think we should not forget, is the aspiration of our own children 
the children who needs English in order to get employment that we must remember and also because when we talk about policy we need to have goals what we want to achieve so these are called policy goals we need to identify the policy goals in terms of goals well in relation to the curriculum goals in relation to assessment goals in relation to the teaching itself goals in relation to the development of the learning materials these are very important and we when we want to achieve this goal we need to have activities yeah in order to implement and this sorry these activities when we implement we hope that we can achieve these goals yeah now people ask me used to ask me now when you did your when you did the policy prof what did you do most well I told myself when I when I answered their question I said well I did a lot of thinking but when I look back and reflect I realized that yes I did a lot of thinking yes I did a lot of thinking but the thinking was a result of my engagement with people that was a thinking yeah my engagement with people and I listened to them yeah you need to listen to them of course they always invite me to talk about the policy but at the same time I use that opportunity to listen to them now the question we ask what kind of listening was required if what kind of listening was required but this listening is what we call an active process yeah what I mean by an active process is that your brain you listen actively you engage yourself and you make sure that the person you engage with knows that you are engaging with them that's very important yeah now this active process is very important because in order to to to, to have listening or rather to be involved in listening as an active process we require to make sense of to be critically to be to make sense and to access critically and to respond appropriately to the information that we receive remember this is listening so when we receive this when we receive this information we need to be able to make sense of this information we need to be able to assess this information critically and more importantly we need to respond appropriately either verbally or in writing yeah, verbally or verbally as in spoken language or in written form or in taking action in order to do whatever whatever we promise to do now what about in the context of policy itself now of course active listening is involved in uh, in policy context it is when we when we when we uh, think of policy policy one thing about policy is that it affects people's life it does affect people's life and we are talking about education policy it affects the life of the teachers especially and the life of the students and when the students life are affected it also affects the life of their parents and so on so because of that listening is very important particularly active listening and active listening in in policy context involve first of all assessing information critically when you receive information you access it critically and you provide constructive feedback now when you provide feedback remember that in order for policy we need to get the support of the people you must get the support of people you must make the people feel comfortable with that policy so when we give feedback that feedback should be a kind of feedback that strengthens relationships that strengthens cooperation so that we can have good relationship with people who are going to be affected by this by this uh, uh, policy or we need to strengthen relationship with those who are, we are working with so that we can cooperate and work together to formulate policy to also uh, come up with a planning itself and more importantly to reduce misunderstanding and to foster understanding right now you know sometimes we didn't realize that 
because usually, you know, being Malaysians particularly, we don't tell what we feel. We, we tend to keep, keep things to ourselves. So sometimes, misunderstanding, hap misunderstanding happens, but we are not aware of the misunderstanding. And we need to listen. And this is when we need to read between the listen. Okay, read between the so we have to also listen between the lines. We need to look at people's faces. When we listen, we need to have contact. We look at their faces and are they smiling? What about their eyes? What do you see in their eyes? That's very important. That is listening but at the same time looking at cues and signs in order to know what they feel. Because sometimes we feel things are good because we feel things are good for them. But the people affected by policy change do not feel the same. They do not feel the same. In fact, what they feel is that again another change, again a burden for us. Why are they doing this to us? So and on and on and on. So that's why I said when we listen, we listen actively and evaluate as well as listen and I always tell people listen with your heart. It's not enough to listen with your ears. Listen with your heart. Now, why are we listening with our heart? And why are we involved in active listening? This is because we want to create effective communication. Yeah? And effective communication, effective communication only occurs when we really understand the other person particularly what the other person has said, the meanings, the attitudes, the feelings behind the words. Yeah? Because when people say certain things, oh, I'm all right, I'm okay, I'm okay with that. But sometimes the words are not enough. You need to really understand what actually they mean. And this takes time. And this Take care. You must care for other people in order to understand that they are not, they actually do not like what you're doing. And this requires listening patiently and with concentration. Yeah, that's why. Listening patiently. Listening with concentration. And this takes time and effort. Now, let me, let me just what this is from what I feel, what I think, and from my own experience as someone who's actually actively involved or were directly involved in doing the policy and coming or the planning. Now, there are actually five stages of listening. Yeah, five stages of listening. The first is receiving. Okay, you receive information, you receive ideas, you receive um, viewpoints. When you receive this information, then we evaluate. We evaluate this information based on our own background knowledge. Because each one of us has our own way of thinking. You evaluate. Then you reflect. Do you reflect? Like for me, when I listened, during that time when I was doing the policy, during that time when I was planning, you see the things that during that time, my aim was to enable every single Malaysian, or rather, to prevent any single Malaysian not being employed because of their bad English. That was our trying to do. That our students need to be given a chance so that they can communicate in the language, in English particularly. They should not not be given a job because of the bad English. That was my aim then. It was what I wanted to do. Yeah, that was what I wanted to do. So that was my thinking. So I need to listen to the information and relate to my own thinking. And I evaluate that. I reflect, as I said. Then I reconcile. Now, reconciliation is something which is not easy to do because one has to listen to other people's ideas and you have ideas yourself 
and how you're going to reconcile my ideas which might be different from yours. That is a really difficult process and you need to do a lot of negotiation, you need to talk, you need to listen to each other. While I listen to them, they also have to listen to me and we need to negotiate and that's not an easy, that is very difficult. Yeah? And responding, that is ultimate because the response, my response will be to come up with policy statements. Yeah, that was my response. And the other thing that I need to do, once we've come up with policy statements, policy goals, we've got to come up with the implementation plan. These are my own response to whatever that I hear because I was given that job. The job is to come up with a CFR aligned policy and then implement that policy in terms of by coming up with planning, the planning itself. Yeah, okay. Now, let me talk about the listening now. Okay, so I've given the background to the, the context of policy I'm going to, that I'm going to talk about. Now, the next question we ask is that people always say it is time to listen. Yeah, it is time to listen. <laughs> I've always been told that. Oh, Prof, it's time to listen. It's time to I say, yeah, it's time to listen. The question is, when? When do we listen when we are involved in policy? Well, the listening is, happens every time at different stages of policy formulation, different stages, and different stages of policy planning, and which involve different kinds of listening and different kinds of responding. And sometimes people say, you can't give in all the time and we listen. Yeah, we listen to everybody. We cannot say yes to this person, yes to that person, yes to... So what policy are we going to come up with? So what we need to do, as I said just now, when we listen, we listen and assess and we reflect. But the most important thing is that we make sure that we fulfill our purpose. That is, making sure that our English language education system is aligned to international standards. And making sure that by 2025, we achieve our goals. Now, so we have asked the question, when? We have asked the question, what listening involves? The next question we ask is, yeah, we say we listen. Yeah, to whom do you listen? That's a question, that's the next question. Yeah, who do you listen to when you, when you come up with policy? Well, well, of course you listen to yourself, that's very important <laughs> because you need to listen to yourself. Because, and, but also, the self is not the center of the universe. You must remember that you need to listen to people, other people. And who are these other people? There are many, many kinds of people you need to listen to. But we have three different groups. One, those in power. These are the people who tell us, we want this, you give us this. Those in power. They tell us what they want. And Malaysian government has come up, has come up with a book, which is Malaysian Education Blueprint. And in that book, the voice of the government, or the voice of a nation, was in the written form. And what is said in that book is that that all, not just English language education, but Malay and all other education, yeah, should be aligned to international standards. So these are people in power. Number two, you need to listen to people with expert knowledge. And as I said, see our common, common European frame of reference is something new to all of us. When I first heard it, I first heard it when I was asked to do the roadmap. So it was very new indeed. So I need to listen to expert knowledge. And the expert knowledge can be divided into two groups local expert and abroad yeah so I will talk I will discuss later the kind of listening I need to do in order uh, sorry, in, in order for me to get knowledge from the expert from abroad and knowledge from the expert at home and the next group of people affected by policy and this is during the implementation itself.
Now in this talk I'm just going to look at two, uh, two stages only, policy formulation, policy planning, because these were the two stages that I was really involved, actively involved, because I, I wrote the document with my group and I came out with, the first book was, I came out was 60 pages I think, and in that book I wrote uh, the aspiration of the, of, of the Malaysian people uh, in relation to, uh, with respect to making English education or rather producing English education of international standards. And when we listen to these people, you need to reflect. Sometimes we don't talk about reflection because we usually, what we usually do is that we listen and that's it. We listen, that's it. So in policy, you need to reflect. So after listening, I had a lot of meetings. I listened to different, different people every day when I was actually involved in writing the form, uh, policy and planning. And I had to reflect. So every day was a reflection for me. Whatever I heard, I had to reflect. And of course, you have to listen to yourself because you need to be able to say, this, I think, is the way we should go. This is the way we should move. This is our direction. I had to say that and I had to be strong. So I need to listen to myself in order to do that. But at the same time, when I listen to myself, I need to, as I said, reconcile yeah, with other people's ideas, my own ideas, to be reconciled with other people's ideas, negotiate. And also I need to respond accordingly. And my response is the document itself, the language education policy document, which we call the roadmap. Now, okay, next. Well, when we talk about policy, policy, one thing about policy is that it, it is a process from initiation to creation to implementation. Yeah, that these are the, this is part of the process of policy. And usually it goes in sequence, yeah? It goes on in sequence, but sometimes yeah, as things happen where you in at the initiation stage you formulate a policy. When you start creating, it's, oh my goodness, you know I create this or we create this. How are we going to put this in a plan? So we've got to revisit our policy and see is it possible. Particularly when it talks about policy goals in terms of curriculum, because uh, when we come up with policy goals uh, in terms of curriculum, we must make sure that. When we come up with activities with respect to curriculum that have to be achieved. That at the end, into three, we divide into three stages. In 2025, whatever goals with respect to curriculum must be achieved. So, which means that even though this is a sequence, that this sequence we can, what we call that, retreat and move forward and make negotiations. So we do a lot of listening here. Right, let me talk about the initiation stage. This is when we listen in to formulate policy. This is that stage. And the policy, the CFR aligned policy. Now, now at the stage of formulation, I listen a lot to those in power. And they are usually political leaders and senior MOE officials. Now, in, the, in this kind of listening, Usually, in, at that level, you are actually told what the aspiration of the nation is. So you have to listen. And, but even though we know the aspiration of the nation is to align English language education to the common European of ref, uh, frame of reference, that is just a one-liner. It's just a statement of intent. As policy makers and planners, we have to come up with specific goals. And these specific goals, as I said, this specific are concerned with curriculum, concerned with teaching learning, including teaching material, and concerned with assessment. So we have to come with policy goals for all these three, and that's not easy. So which means that when the people tell us, do this, we listen to them, but again, we need to make sure that, you know, that we reflect and see how we're going to do this. 
So this listening is actually active and reflective, this listening to those in power. So that in order to increase our receptiveness to the ideas and thoughts of the other person, and then we need to prioritize. We need to prioritize. Prioritize what is important, what is not as important, and access information. And use information to improve our understanding, my understanding. What does it mean to align English language education to international standards? What does it mean? What does it involve? Yeah. Then I need to reflect. Now let me just talk about the past. I needed to reflect. I needed to make connections. I needed to make connections between diverse information that I receive from different people in order to construct meaning. And I need to reconcile existing my existing knowledge with these ideas and information that I receive from different people who are in power. And then I respond. And I responded with recommendations and possible solutions. That is, the solution is that by 2025, with all these activities we put forward in the planning, we would achieve, we would improve, we will improve our student learning outcomes by making sure that our English education system is of international standards. That was my responsibility then. Now, when we listen, we need to have an open mind. We need to have an open mind so that both parties, us and those in power, can create space so that we can come together and meet in a meaningful way to create the conditions in which we can allow new thinking to occur. I need new thinking. My group need new, needed new thinking because only with new thinking we can come up with not just the policy formulation but later on with the planning itself. The planning is the one which is most difficult. Next, after listening to those in power or rather you need to listen to those in power. You also need to listen those to those with expert knowledge. These are people like experts in the CFR. These are experts in the CFR. They are, uh, you know, from different countries, from Europe mostly, from England. ELT experts, experts in English. Yeah. Now, from abroad, we need to get this information as fast as possible. We need to listen to them. So. My team was very good. I had this, uh, you know, a uh, group of people say, okay, never mind, Prof. We get the expert from abroad. I said, how do we do this? We organized CFR, the CFR symposium. So we did that in 2013. So I listened to them. I said, okay, right, let us have the CFR symposium. Let us bring those people from abroad to Malaysia and let us bring our own expert, yeah, uh, uh, our own expert, uh, academics from different universities to be here as well so that we can then get ideas from them and from those ideas we can concretize, we can construct meaning and we can formulate the policy. Again, I need to reflect. So, <laughs> I was always telling myself, oh dear, I think, uh, you know, I, I live in, uh, then I live in Bangsa and I used to, uh, I used to go to the, to the coffee bean in Bangsa shopping complex and my friend used to tell me, Zoraida, I think you've got to bring your bed here. <laughs> you don't go home, you should be here all the time. But what they didn't realize that, uh, you know, until they said, why are you here? I said, I need coffee to think. And I need to be alone, so can you all just leave me alone? <laughs> and I had to go there and drink coffee and reflect all the time. Reflect and reflect and reflect. So what, what is it? What am I supposed to do? What is it that I need to come up with? I need to come up with something new. I need to come with something concrete and clear and I need to tell the nation this is what we want. So, so the idea of having experts abroad being brought together for us to listen to them and get information from them is a good idea or rather was a good idea. Now, what about expert at home? The expert at home, the experts at home are those people who are actually members of my English Language Standards Quality Council. They are together, they were together with me and I need to listen to them because they are expert in ALT, they are maybe not a CFR, 
the CFR experts were from abroad, but they are experts in LT, experts in English, experts in assessment and all that. And I'm a linguist. I'm a linguist. And I would say I'm also now applied linguist. So I've got different ideas about things and I need to listen to them because they are the experts. Now what, what happened is that when we had meetings, when I had meetings in my group, I, I listened to them actively. I've tried to understand what actually they think and to recognize what was not said, not just what was said, because I was a chair then, but what was not said. And I need to interpret and I need to access their viewpoints in order to come to an agreement so that I can agree with them. I must say that during this, this was, this was the most turbulent part of my policy uh, journey. Because each one of us had our own ideas of doing things, yeah. Each one of us had our own ideas of doing things. And we don't seem to agree with each other. But fortunately, we come to an agreement and because of that we came out with a policy. Next, the creation stage, the English language education roadmap itself. This is where we created the planning. Now, at this stage I have to listen to many, many people. Many people. I had to listen to people who wrote the curriculum, yeah, from the Ministry of Education. Got, I had to listen to people from the Ministry as well, those in charge of assessment. I've got to listen, to, I had to listen to university lecturers, teacher trainers, and so on. Lots of people. Because, because I need to know what actually they have done in the past and how I'm going to bring what they have done from that to, to change the way they do things or rather to change a plan in such a way so that at the end of that journey in 2025 we achieve what we wanted to achieve and in order for me to help me to come up with the implementation roadmap which is about 400 odd pages. It's a, it's, it's a really massive document. Yeah. So it, I did a lot of thinking and, and listening. And oh dear, it's quite a difficult journey, but I said it's worth it. Now, when you listen to these people, especially people like the MAOE officers involved in curriculum and so on, you need to listen to them in order to gather information. You need to listen to them to understand and access different viewpoints and make connections. And you need to listen for ideas and possible solutions so that we can put in place activities to achieve the policy goals and achieve maximum results. And this is not easy because sometimes I don't agree with them. They didn't agree with me because they thought that my idea of planning for 11 years is too too great, too, 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 how do I put it, uh, uh, something which is not easy to achieve, yeah. So I had to reflect and I had to respond and fortunately I have those who believe in this and those who believe in this work with me and I will respond as the roadmap itself. We produced a roadmap as I said before in 2015 and we submitted in 2015, in December 2015. The final words. My fa the final words is this. Now, now, now it is the implementation, implementation stage, yeah? Because implementation is until 2025. I'm not totally involved in implementation. But what, what, what I would like to say is that during the implementation stage, all of us need to listen to teachers and to others involved in the implementation. This is really important. The best public policy is when you're listening to people who are going to be impacted by the policy. If you don't listen to them, I'm afraid the policy may not succeed. So let me quote Hudson et al. in 2019. They say, policies do not fail or succeed in their own right. Rather, their progress depends on how they are implemented. Now, success or failure will be determined to a large extent the way we listen, yeah? And the way we respond, respond to and communicate with those affected by the reform. Now, when we listen, particularly teachers, I'm going to focus on teachers, 
We listen emphatically to teachers. Listen with empathy to teachers and try to understand their concerns and feelings from their own perspective, not from our perspective, from their own perspectives and make it clear to them that they're being heard and understood. If we don't do this, it will not work. We need to listen with empathy and to explain clearly what is going on so that they understand the need for change. If people don't understand the need for change, they don't believe in the change because they say, why are we doing that? It makes life difficult for us. So we need to make sure that they understand the need for change and they feel they are part of the change. They are part of the change and they are very important part of the change. You need to invite them to give suggestions and, and uh, for improvement. Okay, so I'm, I'm resharing what I feel because I'm not involved in implementation now. And we need to try not to burden our teachers with unnecessary extra work. But more importantly, listening has to be followed by action within the limitations of the possible. You can just, as I said, within the limitations of possible, we need to take action. But it must be, we must do it. We, it is possible for us to do it. Let me come to the last two slides of my presentation. Now, when we talk about policy formulation implementation, policy, policy, policy formulation planning implementation, we need to talk about partnership. When we do this kind of thing, this work is not easy. You have to have, you have to work and cooperatively, there must be partnership. What do we mean by this? We need to engage stakeholders and listen before policy formulation and before during implementation in, in, during the implement the planning implementation yeah okay next the implementation this is my this is what I need to share with people who are doing who are you know who are in charge of implementation the implementation will be met with little success with limited success without involvement and support of the teachers now listen with empathy don't say that, oh no, they're just complaining. No, not really much, you can't. You must listen with empathy, reflect, taking into account other people's views and ideas and reconcile with your own views and take action. Okay, listen with empathy to those affected by policy change and take their views as part of continuous improvement. You should not stop, you should go on and do it. Yeah? And prepare for the unforeseen listen and allow for unforeseeable contingencies very importantly you must always prepare for something unexpected like COVID you see although we have we fortunately we have implemented it but because of COVID lots of things happen our teachers were under great stress they were asked to do online and they have not yet learned how to do online but were forced to do online yeah we have to have great sympathy with our teachers but the teachers themselves have to also feel that they have something to contribute they their students need them if they can work with us with those people who implemented the policy together we work together as a group we can then help our children to achieve the aspiration that is our students can achieve the kind of English that will make them employable in the future so when people say our students are not employable, it is not because of English. It is because of something else. Now, let me quote this. Let me end, or rather, I'm going to end soon. Let me end, or rather, let me how put it, uh, summarize what I said earlier in these few words. People may not remember exactly what we did or what we said. Even my talk, people may not remember. But they will remember how we made them feel and how much we cared by listening to them in a humane manner. This is part of being human. When we care, people know. Our children know, our teachers know, and the parents of the children will know. Because caring is something that human beings need. And when we listen, please listen in a humane way. Yeah. And let me end this by acknowledging those who helped me in the preparation of this roadmap. 
the preparation of this roadmap has a huge was a has been a huge undertaking and the writing of this document of the roadmap document has constitu constituted an enormous amount of work and if it would not be possible without the support and of those people who supported me the way they're able to listen to me and they were able to give me feedback by listening to me I warmly thank all of them I thank the roadmap team members my colleagues and friends who have contributed to the writing of this document and were involved in implementing the activities for CFR alignment thank you our nation is listening the children are listening the teachers are listening so when are we going to listen to them please listen to them so that by listening we can improve the condition of our teachers and our students and by listening inshallah we are able to achieve the nation's aspirations that is improve the learning outcomes of our students so that they can communicate and able to get work not because not be unable to get work not because of the inability to communicate yeah but they are able to get work because of ability to communicate so i thank you all for listening and i hope one day i will also i will, a I will be able to listen to do more listening and by doing more listening i can help others to listen thank you